Hello Creator! It's time to take a look at Sequencer, a UEFN tool that lets you create cinematics and cutscenes in your game and can be used for even more. One of the key features of Sequencer is to take an item, like our post-process volume from the last lesson, and change its properties over time, or at specific times. In this example, you can see the sequence starts with the post-process volume that has a normal saturation, and over time it becomes desaturated. To make this yourself, create a new folder in the content browser called Sequences. Inside this folder, right-click and under Cinematics, select Level Sequence. Call this Sec underscore Saturate, then double-click it to open the Sequencer window. If you've used any non-linear editing software before, it should look familiar. If not, don't worry, it's pretty simple. On the left are tracks, which are the items that you work with and adjust over time. On the right is the timeline, and on the toolbar are our settings. To add our post-process volume to the sequence, you can click the plus tracks button and under Actor to Sequencer, find the post-process volume, then select it. Another way is to instead look at the outliner, find the post-process volume, and drag it over to the track section. Before moving on, if you followed the last lesson, make sure to head over to the post-process volumes details window and remove the material you created in the last lesson. Then, to add the saturation property of the post-process volume to the sequence, Click the plus sign on its track, and under Settings, Global Color Grading Menu, click Saturation. Another way to do this, in the Details window for the post-process volume, find Saturation, and hit the Add Keyframe button, creating a track for saturation. In the Details window, make sure the saturation is set to 1, then click the Add New Key at Current Time button under the Saturation track. Now, two seconds later, you want to make the saturation 0, but it may be hard to know where two seconds later is. The default sequencer view is set to display in frames, and is presented at 30 frames per second. That means each second, 30 frames go by, and every 2 seconds, 60 frames. So I want to go 60 frames into the sequence, make the saturation 0, then add a keyframe. Now if I play the sequence from the beginning, it will smoothly go from fully saturated to completely desaturated. If you want to change how the sequence view is presented, you can go to the sequence display rate setting and make the sequence present at 60 frames per second or change the sequence to display in seconds instead of frames. Now, to get a more cinematic view of our mountain, let's add a camera to the sequence that moves closer to the mountain as it desaturates. In the Sequencer window at the beginning of the sequence, click the Create New Camera and set it to the Current Camera Cut button. This will have you pilot a camera, or control it around the level. And instead of seeing the viewport view of the world, you now see what the camera sees. So, since this is the beginning of the sequence, use the same control as in the viewport to get a good look at the mountain. Add a keyframe to the transform track of the camera, which controls its location, rotation, and scale. Then, when the scene is completely desaturated, move the camera closer to the mountain and add a keyframe. Playing it back, you'll now see a nice cinematic. The next step is to play the sequence in the game. First, eject out of the pilot seat from the camera by clicking this button in the viewport. If you want to repilot it, you can find the camera in the Sequencer window and click the Camera button on its track. Then, drag out the Cinematic Sequence device from the Content Browser. In its options, choose your sequence, then take a look at the other settings. You can set it to loop continuously, autoplay when the game starts, change who the sequence is visible for, and more. For this test, leave the other settings alone. But since it's not autoplaying when the game starts, you need a way to trigger it to play. Let's create a trigger on our barrel that plays the sequence when we walk up to it. Drag a trigger out from the content browser and place it next to the barrel. This will trigger whenever a player gets into its proximity. In its options, disable its visibility in-game and then turn the trigger visual and sound effects off. Back on the cinematic sequence device at the bottom under the play function, add an array element and choose the trigger, then choose its on triggered function. Now, when you play the game and walk up to the barrel, it will play the sequence. Level sequences are incredibly powerful, useful for not only cinematics like this, but also adjusting items during gameplay. Make sure to check out documentation if you want to learn more about what you can do with sequences. One use case we didn't touch on this lesson is for animations, and in the next lesson, we'll take a look at creating and modifying skeletal animations inside of UEFN.